the upfronts were interesting because the broadcasters were fine, the traditional ABC, NBC, CBS broadcasters um, that, that own the primetime slots. Uh, they actually were fine because they have a limited amount of inventory. I think what you saw was the cable side of the business, uh, which had been growing very much in, in lockstep with broadcast, uh, be hurt more by the, the latest round of upfronts. And I think that's because if you go past the sort of bigger shows, whether they be the Oscars or uh, the Big Bang Theory or other sort of broad shows that get a big audience, um, using the upfront to buy that inventory is not as, um, it's not as efficient as they would like to be because they realize that they don't know if that audience is gonna be watching that show or not. And because of on-demand viewing and multiple devices, there are other ways in which people get that um, fragmented content than the people who happen to be watching appointment TV today. I think what we're gonna see is more people saying, why am I investing the money up front when I know I can probably buy that show later, which is only not the case in broadcast, because um, broadcast is a limited pool of inventory, but if they know they can reach their audience some other way, then yes, I think the upfront would could become a, 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 more, a more problematic um, effort for the cable companies, because the cable companies have that more fragmented audience. On the flip side, Cable companies recognize that this could be a trend, and they are packaged. It's for them. It's a matter of how they package the sale at the upfront. So while they may not sell just the show, they may sell sell the show plus other shows in their network, or they may sell the show plus digital, or they may sell the show plus rights to some other properties. So really, the question is, um, how well do the cable companies package that inventory that they have? Because they, they call it inventory. Um, across all their different properties to continue to get their, the upfront to be a successful operation because for them, those commitments are really important. So they are spending a lot of time trying to figure that out. You know, I think it, part of it is um, there's some commentary about um, the future of TV um, and whether we call it TV in the future or we call it just video entertainment or whatever we happen to call it, I think there's, um, there's still a demand for consumers to sit back and relax and to be entertained. And the real question to me is, what impact do the non-ad supported uh, vehicles, like Netflix and HBO Go, have on the ad supported uh, entertainment that we've gotten to date? And are people willing to pay for things that, like with Netflix and HBO, people are paying for things that they can't get on regular TV? Um, is that the future model of the industry? And if that's true, and one of the things that marketers will have to adapt to is where do they get their business from then? Because it's been a very successful and continues to be a very successful way to reach audience.